Thank you for the introduction, and thank you, Jennifer, for kind invitation to here. So I'm, I have been enjoying this meeting so much. And today we will continue uh, continue our quest to the um, long-term memory. So probably not all of you heard this online and offline LTP. And by the end of this talk, I'm going to convince that this online, offer, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to explain what online and offline LTP and convince you that those, convince you that these are important. And by the way, this work, the work I'm going to introduce to you is almost exclusively done by one postdoc, Akihiro, no, he's an associate professor. He's, a, he's Akihiro Goto, he's now on job market. So if you know anything around you, let me know. So this is just a reminder of this audience. So this, um, this is a famous patient, HM. He had a um, um, concussion in his brain, in, on his head when he was riding bicycle during his childhood. And then later on, he developed epilepsy. And it was like around 1950s. And then at that time, there was no good, no good treatment, or no good anti-epileptic drugs for him. And he, the, basically, epilepsy could not be controlled. And then what the doctor has decided to do is take out, remove the hippocampus because they suspect that the hippocampus is a, a source of epileptic discharge. And then what they, had, they did is they bilaterally removed hippocampus surgically. And fortunately, his epilepsy was gone. However, he had a new problem now. He couldn't recall, remember anything new. So basically, it indicates that this hippocampus is important for the formation of memory. However, at the same time, people notice another thing. They found that ATM still can recall old memory. This also indicates something else. It indicates that memory formation requires hippocampus, but it, but hippocampus is not important for retention and recall of old memory. So now we are thinking that we think that there is a, um, this kind of process called memory consolidation. So first, hippocampus is involved in memory consolidation, but then the memory is transferred to the rest of the brain, most likely cortex, for the long-term storage and the recall. So this process, overall process, is called memory consolidation. So what is ongoing during memory consolidation has been a mystery. And that's what I'm going to take talk about today. So our favorite model of long-term potentiation, and if you, and this is hippocampus, and if you give a tetraic stimulation to Prishna fiber, you will see a long-lasting transmission, enhancement transmission. And this is LTP. And this has been fascinate myself and many other neuroscientists over, over, um, across the world. And then um, we have been, I have been interested in this phenomena for like 20 or 30 years. And when I was a postdoc with Robert Marino, we are interested in when, um, we are interested in the possibility that the trafficking of amp receptor is important for the, this LTP. So what we did is tagged amp receptor subunit GUR1 with GFP, expressed in hippocampal neurons, and gave tetanic stimulation. And what we found is that there what we found is that there's an increase in amperceptor, synaptic surface amperceptor after LTP induction. And from this observation, we propose that amperceptor trafficking is important for LTP. And later on, so at, when we are doing this experiment, only GFP was available. But later on, GFP family exploded in uh, different colors. And then what we can do now is co-express another protein, for example, let the process protein, and then you can use it as a volume filler. And the way you do that, you can also see the fine structure of neurons, including dendritic spine, also enlarges when you give it a LTP induction. So this is a quantification of multiple distance. You can see the increase in amp receptor in the snap surface. At the same time, the dendritic spine increases its volume. So this indicates that LTP has two aspects. One aspect is electro electrical LTP, which you can measure electrophysiologically. 
which can be explained by the amplifier insertion. At the same time, structure of the lyric spine itself also enlarges, which you can see here. So, amplifier receptor is not floating itself by, by themselves. So, amplifier receptor is tethered to the postsynaptic structure through multiple protein protein interactions. And this become, um, uh, this kind of view become available around 2000. So we had a simple question. When LTP occurs, whether these protein along with amp receptor, do they also translocate the synapse? And when they do, do they do in particular order? So we did simple experiment. So here we talked, in this case, we talked acting with GFP, basically protein X, test protein. And then uh, we co-express red process protein here as a volume filler. And then when you induce LTP in with, uh, with this by, by photoantagy or glutamate, you can see increase of volume, which, indica which is indicated by red color, and increase of the protein of interest, which is indicated by the green color. So in this case, in, in case of acting, you can see rapid increase of acting within the spine after LTP induction. So this is the data of many different proteins we tested. So this is AMP receptor, actin is here. So you can see when you induce LTP, actin is increased and volume increased. And, or, and uh, many proteins are increased together. So many proteins actually, this belongs to actin or actin binding protein. And this protein actually did not increase. So these proteins, including PS95, Homer, Shank, SAP97, these are all synaptic scaphonic proteins, so they do not increase. So there seems to be clear uh, order or hierarchy of the protein translocation after LTP induction. So among these proteins, we, are, so we caught, we, uh, we are interested in one particular protein, this coffee. So, so this is uh, basically concentration change, which we, was ca calculated by green signal divided by left, red uh, RFP signal, red signal. So this is basically concentration change. So you can see only coffeine increases its concentration after LTP induction. And this occurs for a long time. So let me show the movie. So we are stimulating this spy. So when you induce LTP in this spine both by photo glutamate, you can see coffee is quickly translocated. And this coffee seems to be accumulate in some funny location. So it's a, it's a, if this is spine, it's accumulated around here at the bottom of the spine head. So, and it's basically enriched for a long time. So from various experiment, we are thinking this is the role of coffee. So actin transmitting is ongoing in dendritic spine. So actin is polymerized in the periphery of the spine, and then as a F actin, it moves inside and depolymerizes here. So this is same as the many proteolytic structures, cellular proteolytic structures, like such as lamellipodia or filopodias. But when you induce LDP, coffee accumulates in here and accumulates at a relatively high density so that it can stabilize the actin. And then um, if the, this actin depolymerization is stabilized, but if addition of new, coffee, new actin molecule continues, the actin gets elongated and make a driving force towards outside and which enlarges the dendritic spine structure. So this is our view. So then if you want to demonstrate this view, we can destroy the structure. So how do we destroy the structure? So we decided to use the protein called supernova. This is a GFP family protein, but instead of emitting fluorescence upon illumination, it emits reactive oxygen. So this reactive oxygen destroy the structure at the, in the vicinity. So if you fuse coffee with supernova, you can specifically destroy, inactivate coffee molecules. And then we express this in the dendritic spine and observe the dendritic spine volume. So here we express GFP coffee because coffee supernova is too dim to observe. So coffee GFP, coffee supernova, 
and this that too as a volume here. So um, here we're looking at this red, that's the first channel for looking at monitoring stru spine structure and coffin GFP, you monitor the coffin lo localization, and this is mass image. By inducing LTP by photo uncaging glutamate, you can see expansion of the dendritic spine and accumulation of um, coffee around the bottom of the spine neck, spine head. And after 10 minutes, you can start to see the accumulation of coffee in here. And then here, we activated GFP coffee. No, sorry, supernova, supernova. And supernova kills the coffee. And then, and what you can see is this coffee disappears. Coffee accumulation disappears, we can see by GFP channel. At the same time, volume goes back. So this is a group data. This is CHARI, stands for Chrome 4 Assisted Light Inactivation. And then what you can see is the volume of the dendritic spine volume, uh, GFP coffee disappears, and the volume is, ca is cancelled. So it looks like we can erase LTP by using this method. So this, um, so this let's look at the movie. So we are inducing carry, and we are straightening this spine by photo uncaging glutamate at this, this point, and you can see spine is expanded. And then after 10 minutes, we illuminated this lesion and induced carry. And what you can see is this spine is shrunk. So basically, it, we can erase the structure LTP. And just in case this is specific, non specific, just in case to rule out this is non specific damage to the spine structure, we induce LTP again. You can see LTP again right here. And we also look at the other spines, naive spines like this guy. And this guy basically mostly stays constant. So this is the group data. So by inducing LTP, you can see the spine expansion. But, but if you do carry, to activate supernova, the dendritic spine volume goes away. And then, um, so, so then um, we, was, we did uh, LTP again, and we can see, we can see this LTP once again in the same spine. So this rules out, rules out that um, this, it's not, there's no special damage to the dendritic spine. So here, we did carry after 10 minutes. So, but we also did carry after 30 minutes. We, it also has some kind of effect. You can erase LTP. But after 50 minutes, the, the LTP was no longer erased. This indicates that this effect of a supernova has kind of time window. We can erase LTP within 30 minutes, but not beyond. So in a sense, this has a kind of time window to erase LTP. And we also can induce second, second LTP, LTP. It indicates that um, there's no, no specific damage to the structure. And there's no effect on naive synapses. So we can specifically erase LTP, which with which occurred within 30 minutes. So by using this method, we can um, reverse LTP in a sense. Yes. So outside that eye window, mm -hmm. has Coffilin left the spine? Yeah, so Coffilin in, in naive snaps is highly dynamic. There's no stable Coffilin structure. So basically by destroying this structure, the spine gets smaller. So having this, what can we do? So that's, I, I always ask my question, uh, I, I ask all my, my students. And what we can do with this? Maybe we can test when and where LTP is required during the memory. So we uh, use this test. So this is the inhibitor avoidance test. So we, mouse are put in the uh, chamber, which is connected by door here and the two, two rooms which is connected by the door here. And when you open the door, uh, you will give electric shock. The mouse has just now given shock. And then um, on the next day, when animal is put in here, he's thinking that 
or, or something wrong with this room. I have bit bad fear about it. I have bad feeling about this. And they, he basically hesitated to go to the dark side. And then um, naive animal basically take but, uh, like five minutes or so to go into the dark side. And um, but um, if you express coffee supernova bilaterally in brain and then il bilaterally illuminate two minutes after the learning, basically animal forgets the memory here. So what we did here is we did give us we gave a shock in this shock chamber. And then after two minutes, we illuminated hippocampus to erase LTP. So two minutes later, we can erase memory. Five minutes later, we can erase memory. 10, 20 minutes, gradually effect get weaker. And after one hour and two hour, basically, uh, we cannot erase memory. So this is quite consistent with the in vitro data that we can erase LTP within 30 minutes time window. So we wanted to test whether this is specific to the context we are running. So we prepared two contexts, context A and context B. And these contexts are a bit different in illumination, odor, ambient sound, and what else? Uh, on the size and wall pattern. So basically, we changed their sensory cue and to make them different. And we first gave shock in both, um, both chambers. But we did carry only in context B. So then uh, tested memory in context A and B next day. So what we can see is in context A, which we didn't do carry, the memory was formed in, in, the, in both groups. But if you do carry in, in context B, there was significant impairment of memory, erasure of memory, only in a carry group, but not in context, uh, not con in context A. This indicates that by using this light, we can erase context-specific memory. So then looks like we can use this method to um, erase memory, erase memory in intact animal. So what's the next? So we are interested in this phenomenon. So when you put the animal onto the, some kind of space or chamber or whatever, and, and let them run. And then you can record or hippocampus, and you can find um, places. So places of um, hippocampal neuron which fires at a particular location in a, in a, on the space. So if you look at use a, this kind of circular environment and it let animal to go around, you can find cell which fires around here, and fires, fire cells which around, fires around here, and fight another cell which fires around here. So these are place cells. So if you do repeat this task and let them run and run over and over again, you can see the, uh, you can see the pattern of activity over uh, which is repeated over time when animals rotating around and around. And this is one cycle. So you, if you take this animal, let them go back to the home case and let them sleep you can actually find similar activity. So you can see red cell fires here, and the orange cell fires here and here, and white cell fire here, and this uh, purple cell fires around here. So there is a statically significant similarity between the uh, activity during sleep and run. So this is called replay of awake neural activity. So this occurs in, bo in both non-REM and REM sleep. So we are interested in that this activity, what is the significance of this activity? So we thought that this activity may induce LTP once again while you are sleeping. So to test that, we first uh, let them run the, this, the IA activity and then recorded EEG and EMG and we did fully online fully analysis to monitor the sleeping pattern. This is required because rodent repeats short cycle of awake and asleep period. 
So for example, this animal, this animal as, uh, asleep here, awake here, asleep here, and awake here. And this animal uh, asleep here, awake, asleep, awake. So in this way, J repeats the short cycle of asleep and awake. So that's why we have to do, do more online monitoring of the um, sleep awake cycle. And then when animals are awake for at least for 20 minutes, we illuminate it. And here again, so this is awake group. And in this group, we illuminate it when animal is asleep for 20 minutes. So you are here. So in this way, we can see, we can erase LTP only when animals is asleep or animals are awake. So when we did that, when we erase LTP only when animals are asleep, we can specifically erase the memory, but not in the awake group. So this indicates that activity during a sleep period in hippocampus induces LTP and then causes the memory, for it, which is required for long-term memory. Then this was the same day. And then what we did next is we did learning here and then and we did carry on next day, not tonight, tomorrow night, okay? So we did tomorrow night and tomorrow night, LTP is no longer required. So tonight, just sleep enough. And that's important for remembering what I said. Okay. So, um, so this indicates that online LTP and offline LTP exist. Now, online LTP is LTP that occurs at the scene of event. And at the same time, offline LTP LTP that occurs later also exists, especially during a sleep. So both online LTP and offline LTP during offline LTP during sleep, immediately after the event, are required for the memory. So why such kind of two different um, LTP exist? So uh, do they have different impact in neuronal circuit or not? So what we did next is we express GCAMP, um, I'm sorry. GCAMP with the green and um, calcium indicator protein, and we ex also express coffee supernova. And then monitor the neuronal activity using a uh, ESCOPIX camera, head mount fluorescence camera. So you can see, it's not moving. You can see the, this kind of calcium activity. And we monitor the, this neural activity on day one and day three. And um, basically, you can see the same cell over and over again. And so this is what we did. So uh, for, on the first day, uh, we didn't do anything, just walking. So we put animal to the habitation chamber. And we put in the room and uh, let them all let them explore, and then uh, we, do, we open the door and put, place it dark, dark room. But basically, we didn't give any shock. And second day, we gave shock. And then we, on third day, we monitor the activity when animal is in a lit room, a habitation chamber and lit room. So this is recordings. So we have uh, like a 200 cells. And what we monitor is, so this is basically this last plot of activity. So this is in habitation chamber. So basically representing the baseline activity of neurons. And then we put this animal into the lit room. And then this is the again activity here. So what we can see is um, how specific is this activity in the lit, lit room compared with baseline in habitation chamber. So this is one parameter. And we did carry on, um, we erase online LTP and also offline LTP. So we compared these two, these two conditions. Another parameter we monitored is how synchronous the activity. So you, what, this is actually calcium trace. And what you can see is this around here, multiple cells are firing together. And here again, and here again. So this is a percentage of cells which firing together. 
And this is a kind of representation with PCI. So you can see a kind of this kind of deviation, which represents the activity, which uh, synchronous activity like this one. So in this way, we can see two parameters. First is selectivity, and another one is synchronicity with the firing. So what we found, to, to make the story short, and what we found is online LTP and offline LTP are playing different roles. Online LTP is required for selectivity of the firing. And offline LTP is required for the synchronicity of the firing. So this indicates that these two LTP both are occurring on, um, both are occurring in hippocampus, but they have different roles. So then, um, I'm, test I'm not testing your memory, but I've, I said memory consolidation occurs in cortex. Next is cortex. Which part of the cortex we should shape? So this is a uh, um, work by Bruno Bontempi a while ago, and he demonstrated that this ACC anterior cigarette cortex seems to be important for long-term consolidation. He found that this anterior cigarette cortex is specifically activated when animal recalls remote memory. So um, he has a couple of papers, nice papers, indicating this ACC is important for long-term memory. So we try to look at this location. So what we did is um, we express coffee supernova in ACC and tested memory after erasure of LTP in ACC. So what we found is that on the first day, even though you do carry, nothing occurs. Basically, memory is intact. Even you do carry in ACC on the same time, on basically online LTP. So basically, it looks like ACC doesn't have any contribution on LTP, online LTP. And we also tested um, the um, offline LTP. So in here, to make it easier, we just did um, carry throughout the, every 20 minutes, just when animals are asleep in the home cage. The best, but basically, nothing occurs. So then, animal, one more day, um, um, on tomorrow, tomorrow night. So we did, we did carry on tomorrow night, and basically we found that memory is significantly impaired. And then, uh, but at day 25, no effect. So it looks like tomorrow night seems to be important. By the way, this is, this is a mouse. So tomorrow night actually means that tomorrow daytime for, for rodents. They sleep in daytime. So, so just, so in here, we may, we may, to make it easier, we just keep, uh, um, light every 20 minutes throughout the, uh, throughout this period. So we, uh, we did, uh, um, separated three buses awake by impairing uh, recording electrode. So we found that um, sleep during tomorrow night is important. So to make our story, um, to, to conclude this story, we found LTP occurs in different steps. So first, online LTP occurs in hippocampus right after the event. And then, in hippocampus, offline LTP occurs during the sleep on the same day. And this is required, the initial steps which is required for memory. And then for the further consolidation of memory, LTP has to occur in ACC on the next day during memory sleep. So in this way, LTP occurs in stepwise fashion. So, um, so who knows this movie? So this is a um, movie in 1997, in main black. And here, um, Will Smith um, use, uh, portrays of Agent J. So basically they use a light, this called, a device called neuralizer to uh, erase people's memory. And at that time, at that time it was sci-fi, but now it's no longer sci-fi. You can use the light to erase your memory, not your memory. 
So this is your, your conclusion. So online uh, coffee bean supernova allows specific erasure of LTP without affecting beta transmission of LTP outside time window. So in addition to online LTP that occurs at the scene of the event, a series of LTP is important for long time memory. So offline LTP if we can pass during sleep is required for memory, and offline LTP on next day in ACC is required for memory. So thank you for attention and have a nice sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at the sun. Ready. Thank you. This was a beautiful talk. Um, so you mentioned that um, replay exists during both RAM and NRAM phases of sleep. Um, and it seemed like you did not distinguish when, when you were studying offline LTP, you did not distinguish between those two phases. Yeah. Uh, one, I wonder whether you have any any speculations or any kind of other data that m might indicate which one yeah. might be more relevant? So the, the reason we didn't separate LAM versus non-LAM is because of this um, time resolution of this method is like 20 or 30 minutes. So we, and in case of rodent, the non-LAM versus LAM switches with the order of minutes or less. So this method doesn't have a sufficient um, sufficient time resolution for that. And to do that, uh, there is other optical tool which may be useful, like uh, uh, some kind of optical, um, opt photoactivatable some kind of inhibitor, for PAAIP. So that has an order, uh, time resolution of like order of minutes. So th that might be helpful. Thank you. Thanks, super interesting, and Kali's into a cool technique. Uh, your spine volume changes are very big and very fast, mm -hmm. especially initially it quadruples and then relaxes back down to yeah. a doubling. Yeah. So how can the spine volume quadruple so quickly? So basically uh, what we've seen is actis polymerize quickly. And uh, what's going on is um, actis shivers and new end is generated. And from there, active filament is generated, uh, act, new active filament is um, uh, elongated. At the same time, probe up to three complex is also involved and it's causing branching of active uh, filaments. So that's probably go going, yeah. Do you think you need the entire sleep period to mm -hmm. do the second, the offline LTP? Yeah. Have you played around with? Yeah, so we. Early versus late in yes. the sleep cycle. So we did, we did a fast forward and a late forward, and both partially works. And we, some people said that earlier half is important, but we didn't see such effect. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. Uh, really interesting. Um, are there direct connections from the hippocampus to the ACC? And yeah. sort of part of this question is. Could you selectively? You don't. You don't necessarily know which synapses in the ACC are being altered. Do you think that they're intra ACC synapses, or do you think that they're from the hippocampus? Yeah. So ACC, um, some part of ACC receive direct connection from hippocampus, but the area we're looking doesn't seem to be receive direct connection, and it may be going through the through RSC, lateral spinal cortex, and we are now working on that. And uh, as to which snaps, uh, we are now using a cell type specific uh, promoter to identify which cell groups are important. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Let me ask a question. So the, um, you showed that for, in terms of the timing for the Kali in the hippocampus, it, uh, after 30 minutes, mm -hmm. it no longer had an effect. Yeah. So how do we understand the timing in the ACC, right? So you're looking at sleep, you know, the period of sleep that you're, lo you're looking at, mm -hmm. presumably at some point there's going to be 30 minutes after the event has happened. Yeah. So, so so basically, the, this method, retrograde works within 30 minutes time window. And uh, it indicates that within 30 minutes time window, there must be some LTP ongoing. Yeah. So, but have you tried to, um, you could fractionate then the, 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 the different particular times of sleep which you look at, uh, you do the Kali and then see if, when it's important in the ACC to, to get rid of the LTP. Uh, I'm sorry? So you can look at when the event is happening in the ACC mm -hmm. by changing the time at which you do the Kali. Because mm -hmm. they, you know, how, uh, which part of sleep is important, of this sleep is important uh, yeah. to the... So uh, basically we did a fast forward, so we eliminated every, every 20 seconds, 20, 20 minutes during fast forwards. 
And also we have another set of animal which um, for four to eight hours. And uh, both are partially inhibited memory. And we really didn't see much difference. Okay, so, yeah, so this um, chamber is relatively small, so we really couldn't see typical trace cell property, but we noticed that um, uh, some neuron uh, fires when animal peeks in the, through the door, and uh, we see such cells when especially the synchronized cell seems to be uh, fire more when animal peeks through the door. So probably he's recording some bad memory or from the dark side. So you mentioned or you pointed out that for this offline LTP, mm. you need synchronized activity. Yeah. I'm sorry if I missed it. So did you look at, you know, sharp wave ripples? Uh, are mm. those basically population bursts happening during sharp wave ripples? Um, or um, yeah, we are is not, that kind of the idea? Yeah, we didn't do record, electrical recording, so we don't know. And Could you, mostly, you think it is? Or, I mean, so mostly this is a complex spike. So this is calcium. So we probably have, um, we cannot detect sharp wave ripple in here. So it must be multiple neurons firing together. Yeah, but that's a characteristic of sharp wave ripples, so, right? Uh, that, 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 that you have a really co Synchronization in the CA1 yeah, area yeah, during yeah. shock wave ripples. Yeah, okay, so I, I, I get to your answer. Um, we don't know. The reason is uh, temporal resolution and sensitivity is not good enough with culture. So, uh, replay can also happen in the awake state, yeah, yeah. quiet awake. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever tried to manipulate? you know, the supernova during um, replay, during awake, you know, quiet awake? Yeah, so quiet wake, um, wake period, it's, uh, we, we never tried to do that. Wake period, uh, we, we basically illuminated throughout the wake period, and it didn't work. So probably it doesn't work. At least in the in the next day, maybe same right, day. Sure. Yeah. But how how close in time would that have been to the training experience? Oh, okay. So training experience we we did from two hour to ten hour. I see. Yeah. So at least uh, that's a shift to be after. Okay. okay. Thanks. Yeah. So there are reports of dopamine uh, changing the hippocampus like 12 hours after a learning experience from people mm -hmm. like Frey. So do you think that the reports of dopamine changing dopamine. the hippocampus like yeah. maybe 12 hours mm -hmm. after a learning experience, mm -hmm. so during a sleep period, for instance, mm -hmm. after a learning experience? So have you ever manipulated neuromodulators and looked at oh, that? Oh, yeah. yeah, we didn't see how much about neuromodulator. That, but it, it, that's an interesting point. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Yeah, um, just a small question, like how much of a role like that the ACC plays in the consolidation of the memory, uh, the offline LTP, um, is due to the task or, I mean, we, we, it depends on the task. Yeah, well, the, um, so, it, well, of course it depends on the task, but to, um, at least the, um, Bruno Bon Tempi works uh, fear conditioning. And we are using the um, inhibitor avoidance test. And those are both uh, fear task, fear running on the space, spatial context. So yeah, at least for those two tasks, it seems to be important. Yeah. But we don't know for the other tasks, unfortunately. Okay, any more questions? It's time to speak again. Thank you. Thank you.